Hi there. I'm Phil Ramsey, author of The Floods of Nith. The book is part of the Billy Bonk and Frankel series, which aims to help children, uh, actually all readers, to learn about complex systems. And this video is for parents. If you have children, you, no doubt you want them to learn to think clearly when they face challenging or uh, complex problems. You want them to be able to make good decisions. And that's what systems thinking is about. I hope uh, Floods of Nith can be a useful resource for your family. Now, as a spoiler alert, I'm going to assume that you've read the book. Billy Bonk and Frankel want to know why their river keeps flooding. Uh, they investigate and they find that it all has to do with the local lagoon, a wetland area. And there are various conflicts that shape what happens as they, they try to unravel this mystery. These are conflicts that uh, cause the flooding and conflicts that could prevent them from finding a solution. Uh, in this video, I'll explain a little about the background to the story, what got me interested in writing about a wetland, and I'll talk about lessons to do with conflict. And we'll look at a causal loop diagram that outlines what we call the systemic structure behind the conflict. And I'll explain a way of thinking about conflict that you could talk about with your child. So how I got interested. Some years ago, I, I saw a news report about flooding on a major river. Uh, and now prior to that, I had just assumed that flooding happened because there was too much rain. This news report uh, showed an added dimension. It showed that in that river system, for decades, wetlands had been drained and turned into farmland. And of course, people would, did that thinking that they were doing something useful. They were turning useless swamp into productive land. But of course, wetlands are useful, and draining them brings all sorts of unintended consequences. One consequence I hadn't thought much about was flooding. When rivers are high, wetlands soak up excess water. Uh, then when the rivers recede, the wetland releases the water. In systems language, the, the flow of water in the river gets regulated by what is accumulated in the wetland. Now for the story, the situation gets exaggerated a bit, where changes to just one lagoon affects the whole river. Um, but as I thought about the news report, I realised that earlier generations of my family had been directly involved in draining wetland areas of rivers that I grew up alongside. Not long after hearing the news report, I came across a very different flow and accumulation that reminded me of a wetland. I was touring a bottle, bottling plant at a brewery. Beer was put in bottles in one area, and then the bottles moved along a conveyor to where they were boxed. It really looked like a flow, a river of bottles flowing along the conveyor. Then someone pointed out the accumulation table. If anything went wrong at the boxing end of the container, bottles were diverted onto this uh, table. That way, the bottling process didn't need to stop. Instead, if it took an hour for the accumulation table to fill up, everyone knew they had that amount of time to find and fix the problem. Now, when everything was working fine, the table looked like a big empty waste of space. But it had an important function. It was like an industrial wetland. This might give you an idea of things that you can explore with your child. What's happening with rivers near where you live? Are there wetlands that you can visit? And what other accumulations can you find? Ones that may be more useful than they look, at, look, look like at first. Let's turn our attention to the conflicts in the book. The conflict between the herons and the hippos follows a pattern that is sometimes called accidental adversaries. Once you get to know it, you can see the same pattern in other conflicts including those your children have, maybe even conflicts you have with one another. Accidental adversaries is a little complex, so we'll diagram it as we go. We'll use a causal loop diagram. Now, perhaps they don't appreciate it about one another, but both herons and hippos contribute to a healthy lagoon. When herons are doing well, they make a positive contribution to the lagoon. And that means that the hippos do well. In turn, they make a positive contribution, and that means the herons do well. The R in the diagram 
indicates that this is a reinforcing process. Even though they don't realize it, by contributing to the lagoon as a whole, the herons and the hippos continuously make life better for each other. But if, what if uh, one group want to do even better for themselves? Or perhaps something has made them feel they have a problem. Let's say that the herons decide they have a problem and that they need to make an effort to help themselves. That's what happened in the story. They took an action that was good for themselves rather than for the whole lagoon. They thought they had a problem, they took action, and the problem went away. That's what we call a balancing cycle. The trouble is the unintended consequence. The herons solve a problem for themselves, but they create problems for the hippos. Now the hippos aren't doing so well. What will they do? Well, they act to help themselves, just the same way the herons did. And without really meaning to, they create problems for the herons. Can you see what happens? Everyone is now focused on making their own lives better. It's created another reinforcing cycle, this time shown by the larger arrows in the diagram. As problems grow, each group tries to make things better for themselves and accidentally make things worse for the others. There are problems in the lagoon because the reinforcing process in the centre of the diagram, the one which involves growing problems for everybody, it has more energy to it than the outside reinforcing process. Once Billy Bonk and Frankel understand this, well then they have the challenge of convincing both herons and hippo hippos to work together. They need to strengthen that outside loop. And that means getting them to start working together and more fundamentally, to start appreciating each other's contribution. I'm sure you've seen plenty of similar conflicts. What can help the situation? Well, another conflict in the book, the one between Frankel and Yolanda, uh, that shows one way. It shows an approach your family might find useful. Maybe it's one you've already uh, used. Frankel and Yolanda have a similar problem to the heron, herons and the hippos. They found each other frustrating. In their case, because they had such different approaches to solving the flooding problem. Frankel, Frankel tends to be thoughtful, trying to understand what's going on. Now, where Frankel values thinking, Yolanda likes to jump into action. She likes to get things moving. Differences like this are a natural part of life. They are a natural source of tension as well, especially if we treat them as an either-or choice. When it's either-or, Frankel feels well, he has to justify his way. To Yolanda, that sounds like the opposite of what needs to be done, and she feels more determined to convince everyone she's right. Barry Johnson is the author of the book Polarity Management. He explains that differences like these aren't just alternative options. Johnson calls them interdependent opposites. The more you do one, the more you create the need for the other. It's like breathing. Inhaling and exhaling are opposites. Actually, they couldn't be more different. But the more we inhale, the more we need to exhale, and vice versa. When you're doing one, you usually can't do the other. So if you get stuck in the belief that there is only one way, you'll end up neglecting something that's really important. Johnson uses what he calls a polarity map to understand how interdependent opposites work. This is, this is what a polarity map looks like. Each way of acting has an upside, that there's some benefit that comes from that, that way of doing things. Thinking, for instance, gives us insight into how to really be effective. And action is what enables us to quickly get important results. I'm sure you could more, add more detail to each of those upsides. Each way of acting also has a downside. The downside is what happens if it gets taken too far and the opposite gets neglected. For instance, thinking without action turns into meaningless analysis, or at best, it's way too slow to get things moving. And acting without thinking, well, that's reactive and wasteful. The map shows how people, and mice, can get stuck in arguments. 
Yolanda may tell Frankel his thinking is slow, irrelevant, and he needs to help with the action. The mouse community need to get fast results. She's going to concentrate on the two parts of the map that support her view, the downside of thinking and the upside of acting. At first, Frankel mirrors Yolanda. He might say she's being reactive and wasteful and needs to have more insight, more understanding. If they get stuck in this conflict, they're just going to talk past each other. Now, with Billy Bonk's help, Frankel realizes he needs to appreciate Yolanda and reflect that appreciation in what he says and how he says it. Things start to change when Frankel tries a different approach, one that values their difference. On the map, we can chart that approach. Frankel starts with what Yolanda values and assures her he understands that thinking can be taken too far. With that assurance, he can then introduce the idea that both thinking and action are important. He can say something like this. Yolanda, it's fantastic how you take action to get results and you get them fast. There are things that need to be done right now. And I don't want to get us stuck in slow, irrelevant analysis. Some problems like flooding, well, they're complex. We need to do some thinking about what's going on. With more insight and understanding, Maybe we can act in ways that get even better results. Well, polarity maps help us to see value in different approaches and to find ways of working together. Perhaps you can use a polarity map next time you and your child disagree. Of course, like, like any tool, you'll get better at using it the more that you practice. Well, in this video we've looked at wetlands, at accidental adversaries, and at polarity maps as a tool for dealing with differences. These are all complex ideas. Uh, they're ideas that many adults find challenging. Please don't think you have to do everything with your child. With all the Billy Bonk stories, the aim is to help readers just take another step in understanding complexity and how to make better decisions. Make sure you have fun learning together.